In the previous tutorial, I mentioned that the at web servers annotation, uh, while it does help us write a web service, but just annotating with that single annotation, it's useful only in a very simplistic scenario. There are a lot of scenarios where just annotating a web service with at web service annotation would not be enough. So in this tutorial, we're going to spend some time and try to look at the scenarios where it would not be enough and why we would need to learn a few more things in order to customize the way our web services turn out. So let me start with the simple question. When we write new code, do we write the interface first or the implementation first? So let's say I have an implementation and I have an interface. And let's say I'm writing this code to provide some kind of a logic, a business service to uh, a client uh, piece of code, right? So there is another piece of code here, which is actually calling my code. So now I need to write the interface and I need to write the implementation. Now, which one do I do first? This, uh, the answer to this question could depend on a lot of things. Uh, well, personally for me, I believe that most of the times I end up writing the interface first, right? So let's say I'm writing a calculator program and I wanna provide add functionality to add two numbers, right? So the first thing that I think about is to write a method that adds two numbers and returns a number, right? So what I'm thinking of there is the interface. I'm thinking of a method. I'm thinking of the two input arguments, which are the two numbers, and I'm thinking of the output, uh, the return type, which is again an argument. So most of the times, I personally would write the interface first, and then I would write the implementation. The advantage of doing this is that I first solidify my idea of the interface, right? I fix this. I say, this is what the interface is gonna be. This is what the method name is. This is what the return type is, and these are what the input arguments are, right? The reason for locking this down, right? The reason for fixing what the interface is gonna be is that I can change the implementation the way I want, but since the interface is fixed, the client code does not have to change every time I change the implementation. So I have a fixed interface and I have a fixed piece of client code and I change the implementation however I want. Right? So this is one of the advantage of writing the interface first, or even if you don't write the interface first, this is the advantage of fixing what the interface is gonna be, locking down what the interface is gonna be, okay? So having said this, let's look at what the interface is in the web service technology, right? So in the web service technology, so you have a web service implementation, What is the interface here? The interface is, like we discussed, the visitor, right? So the client code refers to the visitor to find out what the web service is providing. So to make calls to the web service implementation, it actually accesses through the visitor. So it uses the visitor to find out what are the input arguments, what's the method name, what are the return types and all that. So to follow the same argument, just like we lock down the interface here, it makes sense to lock down the visitor, right? You say this is the visitor and then you lock it down. You're not gonna make changes to it. So the advantage of locking down the visitor is irrespective of how many ever clients you have. Let's say you have like a hundred different clients that are referring to this visitor and making a call to your web service. Since you're not gonna be changing the visitor, the clients do not have to change, right? So they have no changes that they need to do, and you can change the web service implementation the way you want, okay? This all sounds good, but here's a problem. When we do the at web service annotation, right? When we take a web service implementation class, and we do the at web service annotation. So we annotate this class with at web service. Now what's happening is the visitor is actually getting generated after 
your web service implementation. So we're actually going the other way around. We are not writing the interface first. We're writing the implementation first, and we are actually auto-generating the interface, right? This could be a problem because now let's say I want to change my web service, right? So I make a change to the code. I make a change to a method. Let's say there is a new naming convention that I want to follow. So I change the names of all my methods. Now, when I deploy this web service, what ends up happening is this visitor will get changed. Now, if I have a hundred different clients who are making a call to this visitor, any change that I do is going to impact all these different clients, which is a problem. Now, I want to make changes to the implementation class. I want to be able to freely make changes to the implementation class, but I want to fix down the visitor, right? I want to lock down the visitor. I don't want the visitor to change. Now, how can we do this? We know that the visitor is auto-generated. There are a whole lot of uh, default behaviors that are happening. So the name of the implementation is same as the name of the operation. The name of the web service class is same as the name of the uh, service itself and all that stuff, which is good. It does a lot of work for us. It saves a lot of work that we would have to do, but then it wouldn't work if I make changes to the web service itself, right? So this would automatically make changes to the visual, which is a bad thing. So with that said, is there a way to reverse the process? Now, instead of generating the visual from our Java class file, is there a way we can write the visual first and then get the class later? So essentially, I want to first write the visual and then from the visual generate the service impl. Of course, when I say generating the service simple, this will obviously not generate the business logic. We'll have to write the business logic, but then is there a way we can get the Java class later? The, the idea is to write the visual first. The advantage of this process is again, just like we write the interface first, we write the contract first, we write the visual first, and this doesn't change. And we find a way to do things the other way, right? We find a way to write, uh, to generate the service simple later. And then uh, we can, modify the service simple without having to modify the visitor. So this leads to what's traditionally two different ways in which we write web services. So the first way is called the service first. And the second way is called the contract first. So these are the two ways in which you can write web services. The service first essentially means you write the service first and then generate the visitor. This is what we've been doing all along. And the second approach is called the contract first in which we write the visitor first and then write the service implementation. So we write the XML, right? So the visitor that we've seen uh, generated automatically is what we would write first, right? We would write the XML file and then we would generate the business service out of it, right? So both these approaches are very much in use and each uh, approach uh, has certain uses, certain advantages and disadvantages, and you would choose an approach depending on the scenario you're working on. Uh, the service first approach is ideal for learning web services. And that's what we've been using all along because we're learning web services. So we write the Java class first and then let the visual get generated automatically. But then the contract first is something you would use in a real world production scenario where you know that there are like uh, lots of people who are gonna use our web service and you want to fix down, you wanna lock down the visitor. So you write the visitor first, share it with all the consumers, and then you write the service implementation afterwards. And you can uh, change the service implementation without having to change the visitor, okay? so. This is, uh, we're gonna cover both these approaches in more detail later, but uh, for now, just note that there are two different approaches you can take. And to write web services of any significance using either of these approaches, especially in the second approach where we do a contract first, where we write the visual first, we'll obviously need to understand the visual. We'll need to know all the XML that's going on there in the visual file, we need not know all the individual details, but at least the basic uh, elements of the visual needs to be understood. So we're gonna take a look at that. In the next tutorial, we're gonna open up the visual that's been auto-generated for us for our test mart application, and we'll try to understand some of the basics of what's going on there. Thanks for watching.